All right, I want to do a study here on uh, what Jesus gave to the Gentiles. If you are a Gentile Christian, most of my viewers are, uh, what did Jesus give you? Let's start out in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. What was the purpose of the Lord saving you? Did he give you something? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 8. Let's read there. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Uh, every part of the Godhead, um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they're all connected to a Christian. Um, there's a spiritual connection there. It's an amazing thing. Verse 7, But unto every one of us is given, given, grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Christ has given you gifts. Hmm. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word, and I pray for our time here studying this blessed book, this King James Bible. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us into all truth, that your Holy Spirit would reveal things, things that I haven't even put into the study. I pray that you would put it into the minds of the body of Christ out there, those that are genuinely saved, and that you would bring scriptures to their minds so that we could have that fellowship of the Spirit and understand the true new birth. If there's someone out there that has not experienced that, then I pray that they would examine themselves, whether they be in the faith, and that um, they would get some things straightened out or get saved. And I do pray it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, we can see from the context there, from our text, that uh, there were gifts given. What were these gifts? Well, let's go to Acts chapter 15. I'll show you what the gifts we're not. And then we'll talk about what the gifts are. So there's a lot of people going around out there that uh, think that they're born again and they're not. They think that they're in the body of Christ and they're not. Acts chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea, Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Hmm. Um, let me a little spoiler here on this study, what this study is about. This study is about people that believe that Jesus basically came to get more converts to Judaism. It's not what the New Testament is. As a Gentile Christian, you can become an heir of God through Jesus Christ. You can become one flesh with the Lord. It's a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. The book of Ephesians talks about that. There are things that Jesus Christ came and he brought, but it was not that we should be converted to being Jews. If you are a Gentile, and I am 100% pure, uh, Northern European, white Japhetic Gentile, uh, a lot of people think I'm Jewish. I'm not Jewish. I've done videos on it. Uh, showed that uh, my ancestry, there's no Jews in my ancestry. My older sister went and got a you know, DNA test, no Jewish blood in us. So, uh, again, I don't hate the Jews. I always have to say that. Um, I'm a Gentile. Jesus didn't come to make me into a Jew. I don't have to go around acting like a Jew and everything else, and I need to put a special, all the you know things from the Old Testament trappings on. I have to wear a little thing on my head, whatever else. no. No, I don't need to do that. I'm a born-again barbarian, 
Okay, I can't say born again German because there's, the word German is not in the King James Bible. Born again uh, Scotland, Scottish, you know, man from Scotland, a Highlander. Uh, that's another one of my ancestral ties. No, Campbell clan, um, the Campbell family clan back in Scotland. No, um, I'm, that's who I am. I can't say Scotland and German Christian. No, I'm, according to the New Testament, the word barbarian is used of Northern Europeans, primarily. Um, that's what I am. That's why this channel is called Born Again Barbarian. Uh, I'm trying to so show I'm not a Jew now. I'm not going to be Torah observant. Okay, uh, that's what the Pharisees were coming along and saying. That you know these Pharisees that believe they were coming along and they're saying, "Oh, Gentiles got saved. That's good to hear. We need to circumcise them and get them to follow the commandments of Moses." We need to make, you know, add to our ranks of Judaism here. We'll start to have synagogues and all the other stuff. That's not what Jesus came to bring. Let's continue reading. Verse 6. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there, there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Gentile Christians can have just as much Holy Spirit as the Jews can. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? All these guys, oh, you have to be Torah observant. And you couldn't do it if, you'd li if your life depended on it. Keep the Ten Commandments all the time without ever messing up. <laughs> Give me a break, self-righteous hypocrites. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Grace through faith. You say, no, it's faith alone. It's not faith alone. Okay, faith alone would mean you can save yourself. It's God's grace through our faith. Always remember that. Then all of the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered and saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this will I return and will build um, again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down, and I will build upon again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek the, after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Look at that. The Gentiles upon whom my name is called. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. I'm a Christian of Christ. See? Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, Okay, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Oh, where's the Torah observant thing? Where are we supposed to start going around talking about the Sabbath day, keeping the Sabbath day, and, and we need to think about the Jewish feast days and, 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 and we can't have our uh, different ancestral customs and traditions and things. Where does it say that? Abstain from pollutions of idols. You shouldn't have idols as a Christian. Not a problem. And from fornication. Obviously, you don't want to do that. Okay? Um, and from things strangled and from blood. Okay? Um, things that are properly slaughtered. You strangle an animal because you want the blood in there. You can make blood sausage or blood different recipes and blood this and blood that. And then you eat it raw. No. You don't do that. That's what you're supposed to abstain from. Verse 21. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard 
that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. What Jesus Christ established, brethren, is if you're a Gentile, you can keep all your ancestral customs and traditions and whatever else you want to do. You don't have to become a Jew. You see? But you don't mess around with idols. You don't have, I don't have some, you know, uh, big wooden carved thing out here of Odin or something like this. But maybe my ancestors would have had something like that if you go back far enough. Um, no, get rid of that. And fornication. I'm married to one woman. Well, we went in and we conquered some other, you know, tribe or something. And so I took some of those young women there and I'm, you know, they're my slaves, but, you know, I'm raising up children. No, that's fornication. A man must be married to one woman. Okay? That's one of the things I have to do as a Christian. You're a lost man and whatever else, a lost uh, barbaric type of man from the north, northern European realms and whatever else, and you don't want to get saved, okay, go out and fornicate. Why bother being married to one woman if you're a barbarian heathen? Why bother fornicate or, or following the scriptures? Just go out and fornicate, whatever. God's not impressed by your good works or your good deeds. Uh, it's good to be loyal to one woman. I mean, it's just common sense. You go out and you fornicate all your life. Well, it's not going to mean very good things for you. You're going to have a lot of alimony payments to pay and everything else. You know, many different types of child support or whatever. <laughs> That's a problem. Um, but I'm just simply saying, there isn't anything here about you have to keep the commandments and whatever else. And Peter's writing and he's saying, you know, this thing of you have to keep the law. We didn't give any such commandment. That's not there. So you get these people and they say, oh, you have to be Torah observant. You have to do all this different stuff and whatever. And you have to give up uh, customs and traditions and things of your people. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Don't fall for that stuff. Verse 25, it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent them, or we have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. So it's not, well, it was just the disciples, the apostles there, but it's not the Lord. No, it's uh, seemed good to the Holy Ghost uh, and to us. Okay, so it's the Holy Ghost. This is coming directly from the Lord. This is under inspiration that they're saying, the Lord's saying, no, you don't have to turn from your Gentile ways and whatever else. No, as long as it's not the ones that are listed there, which we'll get back to. Um, verse 29, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. That's it. All right. Uh, well, no, you have to give up uh, celebrating holidays. Because it's not in the New Testament. It doesn't say that. So I mean, show me all these people. Oh, you can't celebrate Christmas. You can't celebrate any other holiday or whatever. They're pagan and whatever else. Uh, well, they're not in the New Testament. There's nobody celebrating birthdays in the New Testament. Well, then you have to give them up. Where does the Bible say give up your holidays? Where? Well, Christmas goes back to Saturnalia. Okay, when was Saturnalia being practiced again? Oh, that's right. It would have been the first century. Uh, where does it say anything in that passage right there about, hey, Gentiles, give up Saturnalia? They were practicing it in the first century. Where does it say to give it up? It doesn't. And here's the point, brethren. A lot of brethren, a lot of the people out there professing Christians, they'll come up with all these standards. You know, um, I won't have my wheels on my vehicle were shaped like a five-pointed star, which is a pentagram. I, I took them off and had uh, steel wheels put on that they just have holes or something. There's no five spokes there. God is impressed with my sanctification. God doesn't care, okay? God cares what his word says. God is not going to care for one second. You don't get to some level, super high spiritual level by getting rid of holidays. That's nonsense. What that is, is it's a legalistic standard that people are coming up with, just as the Jews in the first century were coming along and saying, you must be circumcised and you have to keep the commandments. And that 
disciples are saying, we, we didn't say anything like that. And the Holy Spirit, no, that's not true. I didn't say that. And that's what all these people are doing out there. You can't say, we, we worship on a Sunday or we worship on a Tuesday. or we, Oh, no, it has to be the Sabbath day. Why isn't it in Romans chapter 13, verse 9 then, when Paul gives the commandments that a Christian should follow? Not keep to be saved, follow the commandments. Instruction in righteousness and things. Why doesn't Paul mention keeping the Sabbath day? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's not there. Why? Because it's given as a sign to the Jews. <laughs> All right. Um, watch out for this stuff. See, the devil's job, if you ever read uh, Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, Pilgrim and Faithful and Hopeful and things, some of the, his different companions, they're walking along and it's constantly getting them, the devil's job is to get them off that path walking along that narrow way, and all of a sudden, hey, come on over this way. It's easier this way. Or, hey, why don't you, about you go over to this city over here? How about you go over this way? Or how about you? That's the devil's job. You come along and you say, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. And the devil says, oh, that's wonderful. Hey, you know what a good way to follow Jesus is? Come on over here. I'll show you. Hey, why don't you try this? This will really help you to follow Jesus better. And he gets you off course. I've seen it and I've warned about it for years. People still don't listen. And I see people and they get into the anti-holiday thing. They get into other legalistic types. Of you know, we have to keep a Sabbath day and you have to this. You have to be Torah observant and all these other things. You have to start to say Yeshua instead of Jesus. You know, and you have to go back to Hebrew and Greek and, and things. You still have to make a translation, okay? Uh, go with the translation that God has blessed for 400 plus years. Not too hard to figure that out. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't think that you understand things correctly, Denlinger. I don't think that you've understood these things better. And, and, you know, you have to argue over the shape of the earth and you have to get into all these other things. And then, you know, if there's no New Testament thing in there saying that you should get into this stuff, then don't mess with it. God's not going to be impressed with you. Okay, the gift that Jesus Christ gave you is salvation, but you get to keep your cultural ancestral ways. You get to stay who you are. I didn't have to convert to Judaism. I don't have to make pilgr pilgrimages over to Jerusalem or something like this. I have to go see the holy city and things and go kneel down and kiss things and, and you know, touch walls. and what. I don't need to do that stuff. You know, would it be nice to go see Israel? Yeah, it'd be interesting. But it's not my ancestral homeland. Oh, but you worship a god of the, you know, shepherds, the Middle Eastern shepherds and things. No, I worship the god that created everything. And my god, by the way, lives in the north. All right, that's kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> so, next let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Yeah, it just goes through me. Every single time I see this thing of, well, you know, back in the old in the past, the letter J wasn't there. So you're wrong by saying Jesus. It should be Yeshua. And see, Jesus, it actually means Yay Zeus. Oh, so you're worshiping Jesus. Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's so dumb. So, you know, insanely stupid. If you want to say Yay Zeus or something, okay, fine. It doesn't mean he's Zeus. Just read the King James Bibles. Did, did Zeus die on the cross? No. You know, Zeus, you get to pray to God through Zeus. He's a mediator between God and man. Uh, uh, but you get into these things, man, and you become a super Christian. You get into this stuff here and the, these new commands that come from God, and now I'm a much better Christian than others. In fact, I'm not even a Christian. I'm a member of the Church of the Living God. And... Um, I'm ultra holy. I abstain from holidays. I abstain from this. I believe the earth is flat. I, I refuse to, I worship on the Sabbath day. I believe in the Jewish feast days. And that you're doing a bunch of things God never told a Christian, a Gentile Christian to do. That's not what the Lord gave you. But let's look at the gifts here that the Lord gives you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I write, I would not have you ignorant. 
Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Remember sacrificing things to idols? Abstain from that. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but is, it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. By the way, it's gifts, plural, of healing. An old study years ago on that whole thing. It doesn't say gift of healing. Okay, the supernatural gift of healing, where you lay hands on somebody and they're healed. You don't need gifts of that. It just works for everything. Oh, you're sick? Boom. You're lame? Boom. You're, you know, whatever. You just lay your hand upon them and it's that miraculous gift. It's a gift, singular. Gifts of healing would be, I have the ability to do a chiropractic type of stuff. I have a herbal, I can heal through herbs. I can heal through nutritional healing. I can heal through... Uh, lots of different things like that. There are gifts, plural, of healing. Okay, very important to understand that. Verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Again, it's completely different than Acts chapter 2. The tongues that were spoken there. They were speaking, and they were speaking it in the language of the lost people in the area. And they're saying, how here we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? It's a language, right? Well, you don't need interpretation of tongues for that. The people are hearing it. It's a miraculous sign gift. It's not the same thing as having diverse kinds of tongues, understanding multiple languages and the interpretation of that. You would use that for translating the Bible or something into those people's tongues, into their languages. Compare scripture with scripture. Verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it not therefore, or is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? And now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. So important to understand that. We're not all supposed to be the same. You understand? I am not the same as a saved brother or sister over in Africa. They have their own culture, their own people. They know their own ways. That's the way it is. Saved brother or sister over in the Orient someplace. Japan, we'll say, or someplace like that. Well, we should be the exact same thing, exact same ministry and skills. No, we shouldn't. There's, an, there's a special inheritance that comes upon the people for being in the bounds of their habitation. You say, what about you, Brian? You're not in Germany. Yeah, I get that. But we, there's a prophecy given. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. It's a prophecy for the future. The tents of Shem, the native people, whom I'm, I'm currently fighting for, by the way. That's another part of this whole Wolfton mining thing. The Penobscot Nation, they're right up there. Some of their sacred ancestral lands up there. The Maliseet from Holton, also sacred area up there. They're right on either side of this area where Wolfton wants to be. That's one of the reasons I'm going to fight for those people. I've met them. I've talked to them in person. Wolfton's lying about the native people, the indigenous people here of northern Maine. Wolfton says, we have tremendous support even from the native people. Both of them I've talked to and they, they say, no, I, I mean, I shouldn't say I've talked to. I've talked to the one, but uh, hearing them at the meetings I've gone to and they're saying, they never even talk to us. We're not for it. We're very much against it. Their videos are on YouTube. You can see them. They're saying, no, we're not for it. They, Wolfton didn't, didn't even talk to us. 
I want to be here to fight for the native people. Why? Because I'm dwelling in the tents of Shem. This is a Shemitic country here. This is not a Japhetic country. My ancestors came here in 1720. Why? For religious freedom. To get away from the tyrannical control of the Roman Catholic state over there in Europe. That's why we're here. But I'm not here to bring, make this little Europe or something over here. New England, where we're at. That was wrong. It shouldn't be New England. It should be what the native people call this area. That's what it should be. And we should be over here and, and being very respectful to them. Like I've always tried to do. I remember I talked to a guy from the Penobscot Nation the one time, a uh, you know, native guy. And, um, and he said, oh, he said, he said, you living in the area? He said, homesteading in the area? I said, yeah. And, um, and I said, let me ask you a question. I said, what do you think about Wolfton trying to come back? And he said, what? He said, I thought that was over. And I said, oh, no, they said it was a speed bump. This is probably a year or two ago. And, um, and he said, really? And we, we had a great conversation. And I said, you know, I'm doing what I can to fight these people. And I am, because I want to fight for the native people, the indigenous people. You know, you know where I graduated high school? Pequay Valley High School. Now, that's a real good European name, isn't it? No, Pequay Valley, the Pequay Indians. Conestoga. There, another one. Um, I mean, there's a lot of Indian names and things in the area where I grew up in Pennsylvania. A lot of native people, a lot of the tribes, all the tribes that was they were covered North America, and we came here. And a lot of the people, the white men that came here, acted very sinfully, and saw the wealth of this land and and exploited it and took it. And they still want to do it. I can't go back and fix the problems that happened back then, but I can fight for them today. And that's what I do. Um. Verse 21, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And that's what all this stuff does too, by the way, all these things they're entering in trying to get you back under the law. It makes a schism in the body. I mean, didn't that happen in Acts chapter 15? Wasn't that the whole point? There was contention there. They were debating it back and forth and arguing over this stuff. Stop. Stop the arguments. What are we supposed to say to the Gentiles? Should we can try to make them Jews? No, that's not what the Holy Spirit says. Stop the contention. Stop the strife. You have to stop doing this. Let the Gentiles be Gentiles. Only abstain from idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and from blood. Done. It's over. You want to celebrate certain holidays or do certain ancestral traditions and whatever else? Good for you. Do it as unto the Lord. Bring the Lord into your celebrations. Well, you, but I, I know right now there's already some, un, uh, some immature little punks in the comments right now that you know so much and you're so much higher than I am, even though I've studied and I'm older than you. Um, but you know, you know so much more and you're going to be mouthing me off in the comments. Oh, he's a heretic and he's this and he's that. I thought he was a good preacher, but he, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I've been anti-holiday. I've been through all the little radical things and the Lord convicted me of that stuff, showed me it's not in Scripture. It's not there. You don't have to say Yeshua or any other things, use Hebrew names or something. You don't need to do that. It gets irritating. <laughs> uh, verse 26, And whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, 
helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. So I have a whole study on the thing of why don't we see the thing of working of miracles today. Uh, it's because most people have almost no faith at all to them. Have all the gifts of healing. Gifts, plural again there. Do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Um, covet earnestly the best gifts. Jesus Christ gave us gifts. You read about them in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hey, you know what? Now that I'm saved, I'd like to start knowing how I could heal people. Use it as a great opportunity to witness to people. Hey, another good way to witness to people is to learn how to speak other languages. I remember I was at an art gallery, one of the places I used to exhibit my work many years ago. And um, I came in and, and they said, uh, what's your name? And I said, oh, Brian Denlinger. And, and, um, and they said, oh, they said, are you the, are you the uh, interpreter for the German people that are here today? And I, huh, what? And they said, yeah, there's a bunch of people here from Germany and they needed an interpreter. So you must be it. I said, no, I'm not the interpreter. I'm sorry. I wish I could speak more German, but no, I'm not, you know, the guy there. But imagine if I had been saved at that point in time and I could speak German, you know, another tongue, my native tongue, actually, which was taken from me because of a lot of, you know, dumbing down in the public school system and whatever else. And of course, during World War II, they made, you know, you weren't supposed to speak German or act German. You had to change your name if you were German and things. You'd study that whole thing, that debacle because of the Nazis. You're supposed to be ashamed of your German ancestry. So my ancestors actually changed the name Denklinger to Denlinger. They took the K out to make it sound less German, you know, <laughs> ridiculous. But um, imagine the ability to witness I could have had had I been able to speak in different tongues. Um, other people out there and whatever else you run into and you hear them speak in another, another tongue. Hey, let me help you. Hey, here's somebody that's sick, not feeling very good. Well, it just turns out I have the gifts of healing. What's wrong? Oh, my back, I really have this oh, kink in my back. I just can't get it out. Okay, let me, let me just kind of help adjust that. Oh, I'm just really sick. I have had this cold for a month. I can't get rid of it. Well, let me advise you on some things. Let me give you some things that you need to get here at the store that will help you. Gifts of healing. You see? Jesus Christ gave gifts to the Gentiles. He gave us lots of gifts. They're written about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But there's nothing in there about us acting like Jews. <laughs> uh, Jesus didn't come to expand the ranks of Judaism, brethren. Um, and when you ever, whenever you see somebody trying to get you back under the law, trying to get you back to be Torah observant, and you, you have to celebrate the Sabbath day, and you can't celebrate your holidays, and you can't have your ancestral ways, and you have to be ashamed of the fact that you're a Gentile, oh no, you know that you're dealing with somebody that's messed up. And you need to get away from them. Just, uh, no, sorry. You know, the Bible says in the book of Galatians, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel may continue with you. If you want the truth of the gospel, you have to get away from people that are trying to get you back under the law, trying to get you to act like a Jew. As soon as you catch wind of that, you run. You say, no, sorry, uh, I'm not going to give you place by subjection. Not for an hour, as I knock my microphone over. <laughs> uh, get away from me. No, sorry. You're anti-holiday? No, thank you. If I decide to choose to celebrate Christmas and make it about Jesus and whatever else, and remember that, yeah, it's a pagan holiday from my ancestral northern heritage. Uh, yeah, but I can remember that time is when Jesus, you know, was born. He wasn't born December 25th. I get that. But you know what? I can say this is a great time when the father gave a gift to a son. I'm his son. Okay, not the son of God, but a son of God. All right understand what I'm saying there. Um, and there's no New Testament anything that says, tell the Gentiles to give up their holidays. Not one verse. Tell the Gentiles to give up their birthdays. It's pagan. It's worship of the self. <laughs> uh, book, chapter, and verse, please. There's anything like that. You say, well, Brother Brian, I'm a single guy. I don't really care about the holidays. Well, fine. Then don't. You know, our first, my wife and I, our first Christmas together, we went and we were with my parents a little bit, but we spent Christmas Eve uh, going to gospel, going to stores and putting out gospel tracks. Had a great time. 
Do you think we put up a Christmas tree? No. Got gifts for each other? No. Um, now that we have a son? Yeah, we do Christmas. We don't mess with Santa Claus and things like that. No, we don't mess with that stuff. Why? Because I'm not a Jew. Okay? <laughs> uh, when I talk about Jesus, I talk about Jesus. And I read my King James Bible. You know, written, inspired originally by Hebrews, by Jews, but uh, translated by Gentiles. The greatest book that ever showed up on this earth. The King James Bible. Interesting is a Gentile king, King James I of England, the sixth of Scotland, but uh, which, again, I have some Scottish blood in my ancestry, but um, yet his name's a, a Jewish name, James. Kind of an interesting little joke there. And I think that the funny thing is, the Lord kind of played an interesting joke, you know, calling me into the ministry because I look like a Jew and I act like a Jew sometimes and things. <laughs> and I forget. Baptist church I was going to, a brother uh, that I met at the time, street preacher, real huge, big guy, Marty Harwood was his name, and um, I was talking to one time, going off about something, and, you know, I'm waving my hands, getting, you know, like I do, and uh, and he looks, he's looking at me, and he says, are you Jewish? <laughs> I said, huh? And he said, are you Jewish? He said, the hands, the, the, you know, the kind of the attitude, he said, you look, you look like you're Jewish. I said, no, I'm not Jewish, but the uh, Lord has ways of playing little jokes. Gets a Gentile like me that looks like a Jew and calls me into the ministry and uh, gets me out there and gets people all worked up and things. But um, brethren, all you have to do is read the New Testament. Somebody comes along and they say, you should be saying Yeshua. Say, okay, what's your authority for saying that? The New Testament's written in Greek. And my Bible's written in English. And God has blessed me from following this book. I don't have to care about, oh, I, I missed the mark because I didn't say Yeshua. <laughs> What? You know, uh, the word Jesus has great power. You get into messing around with the spiritual realm, they start to attack you and, and things I'm saying, and you, you know, start to see some weird things happening. You say the name Jesus and watch what happens. You don't have to say, Jesus, oh no, nothing happened. Yeshua, Yeshua. You don't need to say that. I mean, if you speak Hebrew, then say Yeshua. Fine. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not making fun of the name of Yeshua, but I'm a Gentile. Don't tell me that Jesus came and he's forcing me to be a Jew now. That's nonsense. So, um, just watch out for that stuff, brother. And there's a lot of it out there. I see it all the time. Be Torah observant. You have to worship on the Sabbath day. You can't have holidays. You can't this. You can't that. You have to give up all these different things and whatever. Here's what you give up as a Gentile. Idols. Okay, you don't worship idols. All right, fornication, strangling of things, and in other words, slaughtering an animal through strangling, and blood. That's it. That's it. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. All right, that's going to be it. I've been preaching for just about two hours now, three different studies. Still have more work to do today before I leave the property here. And um, I always feel so renewed being out here with these uh, balsam fir trees all around me. The Lord is likened to a green fir tree, by the way. Uh, so much for the uh, the pagan, the Christmas tree is pagan and whatever else. Eh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I've done all the studies on it. You can check out my work on it. Um, again, don't write in the comments and, well, what about this? What about that? Just watch my videos. Go through the process of watching the videos. Don't become one that doesn't endorse sound doctrine. Go through the videos. Search the scriptures to see if these things are so. All right? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The things that are written aforetime, Old Testament, are written for our learning. But your instructions are in the Pauline epistles predominantly. Compare scripture with scripture. Instruction in righteousness, reproof, doctrine, correction. So we will see you in the next video. Again, thank you to all out there who support the ministry. We very much appreciate that. And um, lots of interesting studies coming out in the future. 
And so we will see you then.